안녕하세요. 박정철 원장입니다. Hello. I'm Dr. Park Jong-chol. Today, I'm going to talk about implant fixtures. These days, each of many companies sell various fixtures. If we had the wandering of the Lord of the Rings, it would have been easier to choose which product to use. However, the reality is not that simple. Therefore, we need to choose which fixtures to use. Therefore, we need to understand the fixtures to make a good choice. So from today, through three lectures, we are going to study fixtures. Today is the first lecture and we are going to look at why have implanted fixtures been changed and what are their merits and demerits. If you look at here, there are three types of fixtures. Today, most implants are one of these three. The very first modern implant design to be placed at the bone level is the external type, or stem cells, the type under the name of US. The implant that is placed at the gingival level is a tissue level implant. Or stem cells it under the name of SS. And the internal submerged implant is placed below the bone level. Or stem cells it under the name of TS. So these three implants are in the mainstream. What type of implants do we need to use? If you use them appropriately, they can last for a long time. External type, tissue level type implant, internal submerged type implant. So as you can see in the cases, whatever the design may be, if you use it appropriately, they can be maintained pretty well. Then, why have implant fixtures been changed? The first widely used implant, Pronemac external type fixture, if it was perfect, I don't think the changes would have been necessary. It was not perfect, so the design has been changed. So we will look at why and how implant fixtures have been changed. So we will look at how the fixtures have been changed. Over the three lectures, we are going to look at fixture design, implant materials, and the fixture surface treatment methods, how such changes would affect the implant treatment, and then summary. First, uh, the fixture design changes and implant material changes will be discussed. The implants used for implant treatment uh, are usually these three. First, uh, the external type implant, OSTEM, has the brand name US for this type. The connection between the fixture and the abutment is located outside. This is the structure of an external implant. The structure on the fixture is called a module. If you look at the crystal module, there is the hexagonal top on the platform. The hexagonal top will be connected to an abutment on top of it. The connection between the fixture and the abutment is located outside. Such connection has some problems like this. The connection is outside, that means micro leakage can occur, leading to the resorption of bone like this. Another problem is the difficulty in doing the surgery. When the bone height is not consistent in the surgical area and the height of consecutive fixtures is not appropriate, the height of bone will converge to the low bone height. The marginal bone of the implant place 
in the higher bone is often resorbed. When the bone height is not consistent, depending on the location of the fixture and how bone graft is done, the outcome may be may become fatal, thus the difficulty in surgery. The biggest weakness of the external implants, the marginal bone resorption is overcome with the tissue level implant. I don't know if it was devised to address the problem. The cuff part of the abutment is included in the fixture body of tissue level implant. This is the structure of the tissue level implant. The crystal module looks different from the external type. Then what has changed? Broadly, four things can be discussed. First, one-piece implant. Second, the implant is placed at the tissue level, the gingival level. Third, the connection between the fixture and the abutment is located inside of the fixture. Four, the connection between the fixture and the abutment is tapered. The structure of the fixture thus have changed, have overcome the disadvantages of the external type. In the one-piece structure, the prosthesis is connected at the gingival level, so there is no micro leakage and uh, appropriate uh, soft tissue can be secured and the abutment fixture connection part is inside the fixture so it leads to less micro movement and uh, less screw loosening therefore marginal bone stability has been achieved evidenced by many papers actually very good clinical outcome has been achieved so the tissue level implant has very good outcome. So one body type incorporating the abutment in the fixture emerged. The screw connection between the fixture and the abutment has been completely eliminated. There are advantages with that, but if implant positioning is a little bit off, fabricating prosthesis is very difficult. And when you need a bone grafting, two-stage surgery is necessary, but uh, it is not possible with this implant. Therefore, it is only used in a narrow region like a lower anterior or to fabricate a provisional tooth or to maintain a denture. So it is used in a limited scope. The one body incorporating the abutment is not really used widely. As the implant uh, transitioned from the external to tissue level implant, uh, there has been many advantages, but uh, there are about the three limitations. First, uh, the prosthetic option limitation. When the interarch distance is short, the implant cuff is hard to adjust. Prosthetic shape is not very good. They can fall off frequently. Two, in the aesthetic area, the abutment shape cannot be adjusted, therefore, aesthetically it is challenging. Third, when the height of bone is not consistent, if an implant is placed based on the higher bone level like mesial, threads of the implant are exposed at the distal side. If you place an implant based on lower bone level, the distal side, it is placed too deep at the mesial side. So it is very challenging to determine the vertical positions of the fixture during surgery. It feels uncomfortable to expose the threads, so mostly they are placed a little deep like this. If you place an implant deep, that should not go deep, like near the adjacent tooth, you will not feel comfortable with it. In actual clinical setting, the tissue level implant is um, placed very deep, which results in deep bone resorption. In another 
case, the tissue level implant is placed at the bone level, severe bone resorption occurred. So there are many advantages, but uh, surgical and prosthetic limitations exist for the tissue level implant. The problem of the tissue level implant, the abutment cuff, which is part of the fixture, is removed, and the advantage of the implant, which is the internal connection, is adapted in the internal submerged implant. It brings um, greater surgical convenience to dentists. It has various prosthetic options, excellent aesthetic solution, and the breakthrough design, the platform switching design. And it is most widely used currently when there is inconsistent bone level, unlike the conventional implants like external or tissue level implants. Stability in the marginal bone is achieved, which was hard to get before. Internal submerged type implant structure. Internal structure and platform switching are the characteristics. The crystal module looks like this. Internal submerged type implant and the tissue level implant fixtures have uh, the internal connection with the abutment that is the same but the internal connection shape uh, is different hex versus octa tissue level implant the abutment connection there is a stop at the fixture but in the internal submerged implant that there is a no such stop due to the difference the internal submerged implants have many problems there's a high risk of fracture due to thinner wall of the fixture second the abutment connection structure does not have a stop therefore sink down can occur third in thin biotype, if the implant is placed shallow, fatal bone resorption can occur. That is the disadvantage of the internal submerged implant. Let's look at how body types have changed. At the beginning, the body of the implant mostly were straight. When bone quality is good, that's not a problem, but when the bone quality is weak, initial stability is low and uh, creates a problem for implant healing. In order to address that, implant has been made tapered in order to increase the initial stability and the healing. The straight fixture, as you can see here, the first thread is passing and the uh, other threads are following that thread therefore the torque is maintained consistent the taper body type fixture uh, when placing the implant high torque is achieved due to the tapered shape and self-tapping capacity it is advantageous for early loading and the immediate placement. Taper body type fixture shows a higher contact with the bone. Therefore, this fixture can create higher initial stability. Please keep that in mind and then you will be able to understand better the process of implant healing in the next lecture. Taper implant has another advantage. The implant apex passes through the entry point of the drilled hole, reducing the installation time. As you can see, the fixtures do not have interference at the entrance. If it is a highly tapered double threaded implant, it can be placed with just the three or four rotations. Another advantage of the taper type fixture is when bone becomes narrower, the taper shape can prevent the damage to the roots of adjacent teeth, as you can see in the picture. 
Currently, there are various degrees of taper, but taper body implants are mainly used. Next, implant materials. The requirement for the implant materials, most important one is the biocompatibility. Biocompatibility means it should not cause inflammatory reaction in the body and it should not interfere with the cell growth. No matter how good the physical property may be, it should not generate any harmful effect in the body. Professor Brunemark got the idea of using titanium while experimenting with rabbits. Now a lot of titanium implants are produced. In the past, people thought pure titanium should be used only, but where high strength is required, titanium alloy, including aluminum or vanadium, is used. Recently, zirconia, including alloy, is being developed. I cannot cover all of them. Today, I'm going to focus on the titanium, which is most widely used material. Titanium is the most representative bioinert material. When it goes into body, there is a no negative reaction to the tissue. In the body, it forms highly stabilized oxide film and it is highly corrosion resistant. It is classified into grades 1 through 4 depending on the contents of oxygen and iron. Titanium is a metal, so ion can come out that can work very adversely in a living body but titanium in body forms a stabilized oxide layer its thickness is about 200 nanometer uh, the oxide layer enables the osseo integration so titanium it can be used as a safe material for implants people used to think pure titanium can be used only but as a higher strength material is required for implants uh, titanium alloy with aluminum and vanadium was developed so grade one to four are pure titanium and grade five is alloy titanium from grade one to grade five in that direction the strength goes up but biocompatibility is decreased on the contrary, as you go toward the grade 1, strength would go down, but biocompatibility will increase. There used to be huge controversy over pure titanium versus alloy, but it has subsided. Right now, where high strength is required, the small diameter implants or superstructure abutment or screws use grade 5 titanium and in other parts grade 4 titanium is used so let's summarize what we have discussed fixture design and materials fixture design has external tissue level and internal submerged implants three designs which one is good or bad is irrelevant. Each of them has advantages and disadvantages. Therefore, we need to understand uh, advantages and disadvantages properly. With any implant, you can get very good outcome if you use it appropriately. Depending on the type of the fixture body, it is classified into straight and taper. Personally, I don't use a straight type. I use taper implants with good initial stability and relatively good stability with the adjacent structure. Grade 5 titanium alloy is used where high strength is required such as narrow implants, superstructure of implants, and for other parts grade 4 is used which has proper biocompatibility and strength. Today, 
We talked about fixture design and materials. This concludes the lecture. I'll come back to the second fixture lecture. Thank you very much for your listening.